What's up guys? So today we're going to talk about something that I get asked a ton by a ton of clients and usually it comes from early home buyers that are in their first home or a lot of times then couples who are retiring who have a ton of equity built up in their home and they're trying to take that equity transferred into the home they're buying without taking out another mortgage. So then it always comes back to the question of what do I do and how do I do it when I need to buy and sell a home at the same time. Now lately, if you've been paying attention to the real estate market in any way, you realize that there's several different things going on that are affecting it that can make this easier or harder. So for the last several years, kind of during the COVID pandemic and then after that, what we've seen is competition was so high that contingencies, now not your home inspection contingency, things like that, but a contingency based on your home selling, those were not very effective because when a seller gets 15 offers on their home, they're looking at the best offer that they can take and usually that's not one that they have to wait and see if you can sell your home. Those have not been very effective. There have been times when they worked, but over the past two to three years, they've been very challenging to get accepted unless the home that they're buying has been sitting for a long, long time. So we've seen those have not been a very common thing. We are starting to see them come back, but we're facing new problems now. So with the interest rates being so low, you know, you were sitting around 3% there for two or three years. It was basically free money. So it was easy to get into a home if you had good credit, good income, and your debt to income ratios were not outrageous. Now, while we're recording this video, your interest rates are sitting around 7.5%. The affordability of that home has gone out the door because when you can loan money at 3% compared to 7.5%, those payments have now skyrocketed. So people who are looking for two, $300,000 homes, their budget has drastically gone down because that payment has gone up, which throws debt to income levels and all sorts of things like that. Um, just crazy high numbers, which then affects their ability to actually borrow money and purchase. So we're starting to see more people come back to this idea of should we make a contingent upon selling our house? So just the other day, met with the home buyer and seller, their home's paid off, you know, it's worth $125,000. They're wanting something around the same price range, but something that's one level where now they've got a basement, a uh, little, little more spread out, but little, you know, all the space on one level. So they want to take that equity in their home and move it over. Now there's a few different options that you can go about that a loan officer can talk to you about um, that could be beneficial, but what they wanted to do was sell their home, take that money, move into the other one. Well, the issue that that poses is twofold depending on how you do it. One, you sell your home and cannot find another home to purchase. Or two, you purchase a home and you make a contention upon selling yours and you cannot sell yours. So there's a, a few different issues that come into that that we have to look at. Um, now, if we look at the economy, interest rates, things like that, I'm not in the inside circle, so I cannot tell you what's going to happen. We don't know that, no crystal ball. But what we've seen is there's a lot of turmoil going on. Um, sometimes when that happens, interest rates actually come down a little bit, but we're not expecting to see them to just go back down to three, four, five, where they were anytime soon. As well as then in the economy, you've got the Speaker of the House. We don't have a Speaker of the House, so they're having to solve that. In about 30 days, they have to come to terms on a budget. If that does not happen and you see a government shutdown, you're also gonna have issues with any government-backed loans, so your FHA loans, your VA, your USDA. So there's a lot of turmoil going on, a lot of uncertainty. So the prices around here locally, we have incredibly cheap affordable living, so your average home's about 250 here, as opposed to some of these markets when it takes you eight, 900,000, a million dollars to get into a home. Uh, you can get a really nice home for $300,000 here. So those prices have not come down at all though, but what we've seen are these homes sitting for longer. So we're 11 days on market higher than we were last year at this time. Um, we've also seen sales go down 16% year to date compared to last year. Um, but prices are still up. So what that has caused though is a slowdown in the market in general. So now we're starting to see these contingencies come back. Like I alluded to earlier, there's a ton of different options that you can use. You can talk about bridge loans, you can talk about all sorts of things with your loan officer if that fits you better. But the purpose of this video is to talk about the contingencies and where those are sitting. They're still not incredibly common. So just the other day, there was a house, there were three offers on it, no contingency offer was getting accepted. But we have seen several here lately where our sellers have accepted contingent offers and they have closed or our buyers are writing them. And because we've seen the market slow down, there's a lot more people willing to look at them. So by no means is it a common, common practice, 
but it is coming back. Now those two things though, whether you buy first or whether you sell first are incredibly tricky. I think ideally what you do is you sell your home first, you make sure you have um, 30 days possession after closing. Typical closing process here in our area in Southern Indiana takes about 30 days to close. And then you can negotiate an additional 30 days after that to stay in your home. So it gives you about 60 days from finding your buyer to the day you actually have to be out. So that gives you some time to buy a house. I will say a lot of times that's possible especially when inventory is higher, but since inventory is so low, it's difficult. So what we've seen a lot of buyers looking at are short-term rentals, whether you're doing something on Airbnb and booking it for a month or two, or moving in with family. But there's a lot of people, especially here, our home ownership rates are very high in Vanderburg and Warwick County in Southern Indiana. And so we've got a lot of people who want to buy and sell at the same time, and it creates some, some problems. Unfortunately, there's no just magic remedy. Like I said, bridge loans, um, you can jump out on faith and you can sell your house first, which is the ideal one, and just make sure that you have something in between, put some stuff in storage, or you can buy a home and write the contingency and try and get your home sold quickly after that. What I've recommended to our sellers though, is basically have your home ready to go, have it completely fixed up and ready, um, any touch-ups you're gonna do, have them done. Um, have your realtor, if it's not us, go ahead and take photos and videos so when you do find the home that you really like, that you wanna buy, you can make sure that yours is on the market ASAP right after that. The last thing you wanna do, purchase a home and then your realtor takes three days to get photos and videos done and you're not on the market for that time and you've wasted that time when another buyer could come in and make an offer on that property that you are trying to secure because your real estate agent was dragging their feet. So make sure everything's done, your house is in ready to go shape, you're ready for showings tomorrow if they have to happen, get all the marketing ready to go to hit the market and you have to price your home properly. If you're trying to buy a home and it's contingent upon selling yours, you're probably gonna have to incentivize the sellers of the home that you're buying with a price that makes them happy because they're taking the risk that you can't sell your home. As well as then you have to price yours right because if you price yours 20% higher than what it should be, it, it will sit. And then if your house sits, you're not gonna be able to buy the one you want. So it is doable. People do it every single day, especially around here because like I said, home ownership rates are very high, but you have to be willing to have your house ready to go, price it correctly and take a leap of faith one way or another. There's also always the option if you can take on two loans at once, Make sure that your numbers are ready to go. Make sure you know what your home is worth. Buy the home, try and sell yours as quickly as possible, but do not make it contingent if you can avoid it because that's gonna be more appealing to the seller. It's gonna give you a better chance at securing that home you want, but it is gonna be a little risky. Now, what we'll see, I think, over time, especially through the winter and then as we head into you know election season and next year, um, if this trend continues with the market, you're gonna see things continue to slow down. Maybe prices pull back a little bit. These contingencies are definitely gonna become more common. Um, but as we head into election season, if the economy starts booming again, because we're really trying to push a good economy and people are making good promises and the real estate market really rebounds and you see this competition happen again, these contingencies are not gonna work well. So you need to look at the options of a bridge loan, or if you can take two mortgages out in the meantime, do that. Another very common thing that usually happens that a lot of people don't know about is when your first payment is due when you purchase a home. So if I purchase a home on October 15th, usually that first payment is not gonna be due till December 1st, not November 1st. So that gives a lot of buffer, that interest is built in when you're closing on the home, so the bank is still making their money, but it's really helpful for a lot of our buyers because they don't have to make another payment on top of their second mortgage for a little bit. So it gives you a little buffer to get ready, get moved over, get your house sold, and not be carrying those two mortgage payments for too long. And then like always, price that home properly and make sure you get an agent that markets it effectively. Um, you don't want cell phone photos, you don't want you know no exposure on your home. If you're really serious about it, get an agent who can get maximum exposure, top-notch marketing, and who's gonna be honest with you about where the house needs to be priced in order to sell. If you guys find any value in this video at all, smash the subscribe button, hit the like on the video, send it to a friend, drop us a comment. It helps us a ton to get this video to other people like you who are gonna find value in it as well. We're licensed realtors, so if you have any questions, you're looking to buy or sell a home anywhere in the country, we can either help or point you in the right direction. So feel free to shoot us a text or give us a call at 
3850. We will catch you next time.